about sickle. Don't cut the other down. See? Why you going through your standing court of your neighbor? Don't even ask it. Because you are a Jew in the promise land. That was God promised to them. If you're hungry and you're traveling and you come to the wheat fields, you have the right to stop and eat all you want. As long as you get a circle and cut down down. Amen. That was God's divine providence. That's why he said, go out there. But he gave them no pearls. He said, don't worry about getting any money. Don't worry about the script because he, he provided for them because that's the promised land. He sent them to the land of the Jews. What else? Matthew 12, 1. And Matthew 12, verse 1, the Bible reads. At that season, Jesus. At that season, Jesus. Jesus went out the he Sabbath went day. To the he went to the grain field. And his disciples were hungry. Oh, uh -huh, they were hungry. And they began to pluck ears and to eat. See, the very thing he had promised them. Why? You know, I read some commentators about this. They said, why he didn't ask for permission for it? He didn't have to. That was the law. Oh, that was the law. Amen. That was God's divine providence. If you were a Jew in the land of the Jews, and you were hungry and you were traveling, you have the right to walk through those traveling fields, through those standing corn or grain or whatever, grapes or whatever they had, you had to sit there and eat all you want. Amen. That was God that would provide for the poor. So nobody had any reason to be hungry in that land because God had to provide the means for you. Amen. Now remember old, 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 old Dives? Dives, the rich man, and now there's the rich man named Dives. The Bible said when he died, he went right to hell. You know why? Because you had Lazarus at his death. Desire to come and throw him was Lazarus stopped to death. By putting a, a gate around it, it, it cut off God's provide. And <laughs> now you see it. Now you see it. It cut off God's divine providence. And the man stopped it. So the man who owned, owned, who owned those fields and locked them up like that, he went straight to hell. See, now it makes a little more sense, doesn't it? Amen. So that was God's divine providence. What the problem? Deuteronomy 24, Deuteronomy 24 and verse 19. When thou cuttest down thy harvest and thy field. If you own some land, he said, when you cut down your harvest, and has forgot a sheep and, and, you, field, and you left some behind, thou shalt not go again. Don't go back in there again. For the it shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, the, fatherless the, the will. It's for those poor people who are traveling. Remember the story of Ruth? She came back to the land and she didn't have any, any food. They went to the feet the fields and gleaned from the reapers. Remember? Read. Uh, that the Lord thy God may bless thee. May bless thee, Lord. Read. When thou beatest thou when thou beat the olive tree, tree, tree thou shalt not go over the <coughs> Don't go back over it. You can the rest. It's for the stranger. It's for the fatherless. It's for the seed. That was God's divine providence provided for those folk in the land. So nobody had no reason to go around being hungry. Amen. Amen. That was God's divine providence. So he sent them out without a purse or a script because God had provided those means for them. And as long as they went to a Jewish nation. But now, he prepared them now to go out to all the world. He said, now, get out of the text. In Luke 22, and verse 35. I'll wait. And he said unto them, said to them, when I sent you without purse and script <laughs> and shoes. In other words, remember when I sent you out in the mountain to commission? With no purse, with no script, and no shoes. And Did it. you lack anything? And they said, they no. said no. Why? Because the our bodies was there for them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Read. Then he said unto them. Then he said. But now he that had when, the purse. When? When he yeah. said unto them. But now. When? when? Now. <laughs> he said. But that was before. He said. But now. What does now mean? That's At right. this point. He said, before I said, out there, with no purse, no script, no money, did you, did you like anything? He said, no, we didn't like anything. He provided those things. He says, but now. He that had the purse. If you got a purse. Let him take it. You better take it. And likewise, his script. It's on your script. He said that he had no sword. If you have a sword, you better see no comment, and you buy one. 
Why? Because now he's going to send them out into the whole world. They go into hostile places. Amen. You're going to need a sword. See, a sword at that time, the, 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 the Roman sword was called the gallius. Then we get out where the gallius from. The gallius. If the Roman short sword about 22 inches, it was, it was for close in fighting. The gladiators. And we can work better from that. But this kind of stroke was called machura. It was a, a, a shot like a knife, like a dagger, a dagger type. Amen. But why did he tell them that? You see, because as they had these then, they have these now. As they had robbers then, they have robbers now. And they use the old colloquial term from Third Ward, you got less chance getting jacked <laughs> if, you, if you pack it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If yeah, they know you pack it, they want to rob you. <laughs> you pack it. Hey, 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 Amen, church. Amen. You're going out now to a hostile world. Not only are you going to the Jewish nation, you're going to the whole world. Who knows what kind of folk are out there? But the sword was, was not used here in this text just about to bite somebody. You gotta have some kind of protection because you should be at the mercy of every who can come along. Come along. Amen. 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 It wasn't it, but I'm not telling anybody to go get anything. I'm just giving you the facts. <laughs> you should be at the mercy of every who can come along. Amen. Amen. If you have to, call the cops. I always keep you always safe. You're scared, call the law. Don't put me workers into the dog. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So he said, but now get you a sword. Now, here in the text here, they get ready to go out to the whole world, to a hostile environment, not knowing what kind of book you I don't know what it calls. But it wasn't so much a physical sword. The sword we have, our warfare now, is spiritual. It's not about fighting somebody physically. Our warfare is spiritual. This is my sword. Everybody, now buy you a sword. Amen. Oh, okay, sword. It's a sword. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I remember one time I was debating some Muslims and they was worried about somebody attacking the speaker. They went and called the cops and wanted to have security up there in, you know, every in Mexico, I guess. They had, had, had cops in, the, in, this, in this disguise, you know, in case somebody in the crowd wanted to get loose and all that. I said, what, what, what are they afraid of? They were so worried about somebody attacking their speakers. We're going to put out knives and guns, and I'm sitting right there with him with a big old sword in my hand. <laughs> and a big old sword in my hand. This is the sword of the Spirit. This is my sword. Amen. The Bible here, in Matthew chapter 34. Think not that I am come to send peace. Jesus, I'm going to say, don't think I'm coming to send peace on earth. I came not to send I'm peace. I'm going to send peace, but I came. But a sword. I came but with a sword. The sword here is the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. How you know, Brother Robin? Hebrews 4 and verse 12. And the Bible says, For the word of God is quick and powerful. And it's sharper than any two edged sword. And it's sharper than any two edged sword. It's sharper than any two edged sword. It comes going and coming. Amen. Because see what I mean? That's my sword now. It's the word of God. The word of God will cut anything down. Anything false, the word of God will cut it right down. Amen. The biggest enemy of the Lord's church today is false doctrine. In Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and verse 10, the Bible reads, He said, Find my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor what? of God. Put, Put on, on the, the whole armor of God. That you may be able yeah, to, to, to stand. To stand. Wild See, devil. it's a spiritual warfare. He said, put on the whole armor. Why be able to stand against the wiles of oh, the devil? Yeah. See, Satan is cunning. He's slick. Not only is he a liar, he knows how to lie. Amen. Amen. 
And most folks can't see things because Satan is good at disguising stuff. They look, they look real good to you. Amen, church. Amen. Like that big old frosty mug. Amen. Look Amen. real good, doesn't it? Amen. <laughs> look real good to you. You know, oh, when you walk out, out in the streets and, and those people who, who sell themselves, they look real good to you, don't they? Amen. Every time, a new, every time a new movie come on, they have a new movie, every time a new movie, they always show a real fat clip of the sex scenes, right? Make it real appealing to you. Amen. Amen. That's how Satan does. Not only is Satan lying, he knows how to lie. You know what? Satan knows what would you like. Satan knows what's appealing to you. He knows that. Anything to keep your mind off God, Satan will allow you to have those things. So, so but, but, but Paul is saying, you, you do this because it helps you stand against the wiles of the devil. He knows how to see greed. Well, we wrestle not against flesh. See, I want better than not a physical warfare. We don't. Or, 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 against flesh and blood. But, but against press fellowship. Here it is. Power, against, and against rulers see, of the world. See, he's talking about, he's talking world. about false doctrine. He says, against principalities. Against and powers, powers. Against the rulers against of the darkness of the world. In this world. Read. Against spiritual weakness. In high places. places. Read. While Paul taking to you the he whole He said, take armor on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to, to withstand, withstand in the evil in day. The evil day. And, having done and have your all to stand. To stand, stand, that stand way. that for. Having have your all and turn them out with truth. truth. And and have it on the have your own perfect righteousness. righteousness. And read. And your feet shot with preparation, with preparation of the gospel. Of all. Above all. Above all. all. Take the shield of faith. The shield of faith. Where with you shall be able to withstand the fire of God. Fire and Read. And your feet shall with the preparation of the gospel. Uh -huh. Above all, take the shield of faith, faith wherewith ye shall be able, able to stand all the fire of God of the wicked. And take the helmet of the the of salvation and the sword of the spirit. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the, God. See what I mean? The word of God. That that's the sword you have right now. That's the sword. Because our warfare is not physical, it's spiritual. The biggest enemy is False doctrine. Yes. I've said before, and I'll say it again. It's okay to have a ship in the water. You start getting water in the ship, you're going to have problems. Yeah. It's okay to have the church in the world. Start bringing the world in the church, you're going to have problems. Oh, yesterday, during the funeral service, they digress from the program and say it wouldn't be appropriate to take the program unless we have the first lady, lady of the church come and say something in the program. And many people these days are adopting that idea about the, the preacher wife being the first lady. Amen. That's okay for the world, not for the church. Amen. There are no first ladies. In the lost church. Mm -hmm. The church is the lady. Amen. It's the wife of Christ. Yeah. But see, people are adopting all, all this stuff. I just saw the Pope also a little minute ago. They have the program at the St. Zion Baptist Church down here in Sealy. They're having some kind of praise dancers. Nowhere in scripture. Yes, they doing the funeral service. They preach tell them, tell them go ahead and dance, y'all. You want to cry, cry. You want to shout, shout. You want to dance, dance. That's foolishness. Amen. We're not told to dance. We're told to sing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Stop bringing those things. See, the idea is Satan know what you like. All that is is an excuse to dance in church. Amen. Amen. There are some who are going to cut the road anyway. <laughs> hey, so I give an excuse. And I'm going to call it a holy day. There ain't no holy day. Stop that. Stop it. All these, these worldly concepts. See, that's the biggest end of the law of the church is false doctrine. Everybody in the house, turn your Bible to 2 John 9.
And for those who, 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 who could say, Second John 9, what? It only had one chapter. In Second John 9, the Bible reads, Whosoever, whosoever that means anybody, whosoever transgressed and abided not in the doctrine of Christ, had not God. He that abided in the doctrine of Christ, he had both the Father and the Son. If any come unto you, and bring not this doctrine. Receive him not into thy house, not in God's feet. For he that is in him God's feet is partaker of his evil deeds. Romans 16. And verse 16. That God said that it won't be no church of Christ section in heaven. It won't be no church of God in Christ section in heaven. It won't be in that section in heaven. I have news for you. It's only going to be one section. Yeah. Yeah. And here it is right here. Romans 16. And verse 16. The Bible said, salute one another with the holy kiss. The what? Of what? Of what? Of See what I mean? It's only going to be one section. The church of Christ. Now watch the next verse. Now, now, now with you brethren, mark them which cause division. Get this now, he says, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which have received and avoid them. Why? For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own brothers, and by good words and practices deceive the others. See, all in it for is for the money. They would go to Old Testament and grab only two things. The music and the tide. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I'll tell them how those dietary laws of the Old Testament. Why don't you grab those? In the Old Testament, you couldn't have shrimp. Couldn't have lobster. Couldn't have uh, 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 escargot. Who would want it though? <laughs> it's called going still. It's called going. You couldn't have that. As a matter of fact, in the Old Testament, anything in the water that didn't have fins and scales, you couldn't eat it. Couldn't have catfish. Amen. You see, they, they're going to avoid that because we love Pablo. Amen. And Pappas and Norman Nick Nack Nook and all that kind of thing. Amen. Amen. If you grab the old law, grab all of it. Because the Bible says in James 2 and verse 10, if a man keeps the whole law, and you ever feel in one point, he's guilty of all. You got to either have all of it or none of it. Amen. Get ready to close now. Hear what he did on yesterday, the, the, the so called pastor. He gave one passage of scripture. And danced all around it, didn't teach it. He danced about on the sixth. He danced around it, he didn't teach it, teach it. And then that was it. Made him feel good. They started singing and howling and hooping. Oh, all these kind of foolish things. Anyway, anyway, in Romans 8 and verse 18, the Bible says, for well, I doubted that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Now he said, based on that passage, his sermon was entitled, The Suffering to Celebration. Hmm. Suffering, let me explain something to you. There is no spiritual celebration on the outside of Christ. Amen. I can I can show you by, by this very passage. No matter what script they use, I can take away from the proof from that that belongs to us. Go to 13. He's talking about eternal salvation. Go to 13. Or if you live after the flesh, you shall, shall, shall die. But if he through the spirit, spirit mortified the deeds of the body, he shall live. He's talking about eternal salvation. But what's that promise to everybody? No. It's for those who are in Christ. Now watch this. In 1 John 2.25. 
And this is the promise that See, he has God made us. a race with this very passage. This is God's promise. And he promised us what? Eternal life. He talk, talking about eternal life. Is that eternal life promised to those on the outside of Christ? No! Why did God put all the saved? In Acts 2, in verse 41, the Bible says, Praise the God in heaven. Acts 2, 41. Acts 2, Acts 2, 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day that were added to them about 3,000 souls, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship <coughs> and breaking bread. What were they added to? Now, verse 47, praising God. And having faith with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as you. That's what you're going to add it to. What church was that? The church of Christ. Amen. That wasn't the one that was anyway. Amen. Well, how does one get there? You see, 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 the problem is, you see, we are all going the way of all flesh. All of us. At those times, they know people's emotions are all strung out. They're at a loss for the loss of their loved one. Their emotions are all out of whack. They want some kind of comfort. So they get up there and try to preach me to heaven. Heaven is not a place you can be preached into. Amen. Amen. Not as hell. But Everybody, turn your Bibles to the 14th chapter of John. In the 14th chapter of John, and verse 1, Jesus our Lord said, let, 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 let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, you believe also, also in me. Get now in my Father's house of many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, that you may be also. And when I go, ye know I the way ye go. Thomas said, Lord, we know not where thou goest, and how do we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way. And the life, no man come to the Father but now. He told him he need Jesus, but he didn't tell him how to get it. You always see him talk about you need Jesus in your life. You need Jesus. It is unfair to tell folk they need Jesus, but then you don't tell them how to get it. They might say, man, you need some money. And, and I'm starving there. You need some money, but then you don't give me anything. Well, I know I need it. Tell <laughs> somebody I don't know. Tell somebody I get some. Hey, Amen. Find a man starving. You need some food. I know I need some food, but how do I get some? Amen. See a man died of thirst. He need water. I know I need water. How do I get some water? Amen. Yes, sir. See a man bad for the time. You need some shoes on. I know I'm bad for it. How do I get some shoes? Amen. 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 To tell people who are groping in sin, you need Jesus, that's fine. But if you don't tell them how to get Jesus, that's an injustice. How do I get to him so I can have all my sins washed away? Amen. So, if you are going to make your business to help people, you help them in the area where it's most needed. Amen. Most folks have no problem when it comes down to the mother of Christ, do they? No. Nobody got a problem with that. Or, or the father of Christ. They ain't not with Joseph. Amen. How about the love of Christ? Nobody got a problem. No, no problem with that. Everyone knows. Yeah, yeah, okay. How about, the, how about the passion of Christ? The suffering? Everybody got that. Amen. But when it comes down to the church, that when people got problems, see? I'm gonna get personal. Amen. So if I want to help somebody, help them in the area where it's most needed. Most folks are probably come down to the church. Yeah. 
You see, you're trying to say that any church will do. They're all the body of Christ. That's a lie. It's not true at all. For the Brown. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 22. For the Amos, read for me 1 Peter 12 and verse 13. For the Adams, Ephesians 4 and verse 4. Okay. In Ephesians 1, 22, the Bible reads, and had put all things, and put all things under, his feet, under his feet, and gave them to be his, his or all the things or all the to the church, which, which is body, his body. The fullness of him, he that all, that all in all. all. He said the church is the body. Okay? Also, Brother Brown, Colossians chapter 1, and verse 18. In Colossians 1, 18, the Bible reads, And he is the head of the body. I, I'll wait for you. Colossians 1, 18. And he is the head of the body. The church. The church. Uh -huh. Who is the beginning, beginning the first one from the dead, that in all things he might have the prim. Okay, he said, the same writer said the church is the body. He turned right around and said, the body is the church. Now, what's so hard about that? Anybody who knows anything about reading know he's saying they are one and the same. Amen. Church is the body, the body is the church. Amen. Amen. Brother Brown, John on verse 24. And the Bible says, Rejoice in my suffering for you, and fill up that which is behind of the fiction of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Now, now, now who, 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 who don't get that part? Who don't get that? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Here. Okay, I may have said too fast. Did I say it slow enough for everybody to get it? The church is a body, and the body is a church. That's slow enough for you? Oh, all right. So then, if we know the church is the body, and the body of the church, let's find out how many are they. Okay? With Adams, Ephesians 4, 4, the Bible says, There is one body. How many? There is one body. There is one body and one spirit. One spirit. Either you are called. Just as you were called. Or called. Or were called. Or one Lord, one faith, one right. baptism. One God and Father of all, who's above all and through all and in you. Now, now, how can somebody miss that? Can anyone be, be confused when there's just one of a certain thing? Only one. Okay. Well, since the church is the body, and the body is the church, they're the same thing. But they must. In 1 Corinthians 12 chapter, in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13, the Bible says, For by one spirit are we all baptized, baptized into, one, into body. one body, meaning the church. Go ahead. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free, and, free, and, and all, all made to drink, drink into one, one spirit. Drop down to verse 20. Verse 20 says, but now all oh, that many men was yet but one body. Verse 25, uh, that there that should that be no skin or be in, in, in the body, but that the members should, should have the same care one for another. And now verse 27, the Bible says, now, now when, now, when, when, now, what does now mean? At this point, now, you are the body of Christ and never see the body of the church the same thing. He said, now you are the church of Christ and never and to see. That's the only section going to be up there. Amen. Make it plain, preacher. Just that plain. Amen. Anybody who's telling you there's more than one, they're lying. And I step to his face. You're lying. See, God is not the author of confusion. That's why he only gave 
Genesis 1. God started the whole world out with one man. He didn't need a whole bunch of people. One man. Now, you know what? Where did Eve come from? See, he started the whole world with one man. Now, I know the, 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 the song sounds good, the only popular play. Hey, man. You remember that? Was, <laughs> maybe, uh, you remember that song? A hundred pounds of clay. That's uh, an old, an old song. Yeah. Hey, man, you, you be here for a while, about that's on there. You know, a hundred pounds of clay. But, but the Bible, Adam, Adam and Eve, he made the whole world, humanity, one man. One man. Hey, Amen. When there's only one of a certain thing, how can one be confused? When God told Noah to build that ark, he told Noah to build that ark of one kind of wood. Go for wood. Amen. Amen. So how can one be confused when there's just one of a certain thing? Watch this. How many gospels are there? Only one gospel. And on yesterday, the God never said anything about the gospel at all. <coughs> he never said anything about gospel. Well, I didn't think about it. Still, he never said anything about gospel. Only one gospel, right? You know, I know this. You'll never find anybody who has enough nerve to say there's more than one gospel. <laughs> you ever notice that? They never see that. It's four gospel accounts. Yes, yeah, four accounts. It's only one gospel, though. They all tell the same story. Well, if there's only one gospel and God put salvation in that one gospel, if I don't tell you how to get the salvation, that come by the one gospel, I'm going to be in serious trouble for not telling you. Amen. Amen. If you're going to be a preacher, if you if you, if you you claim to be a preacher and you don't preach the gospel, you may well shut up Amen. and sit down. Amen. Amen. If you were to ask the average guy out there, what are the facts of the gospel? I am almost willing to bet money they can't tell you. You know why? They're not being taught. Here's the gospel. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, the Bible says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, all ye have received, and where ye stand, by which also you shall say, and you keep in memory what I preached unto you, that you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all what you have seen, how that Christ died, for I sinned the cause of the scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. That's the gospel. The death, the burial, resurrection of Christ, all according to the scripture. Romans 6, 1 through 4. The Bible says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that Christ be about? God forbid, I be yet a dead to sin that we know what that means. So he got the Sermon was baptized in Jesus Christ and baptized to his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism to death, and the fact raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we shall walk in the life. We shall live and tell the right of the dead, we shall be also the right of the rest. How can someone not see that? Too plain to see. In Acts 15 and verse 7, mm -hmm. the Bible says, And when there had been much dispute, people looked and said to them, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago that God made mm -hmm. talks among us mm -hmm. as the Gentiles mm -hmm. by my mm -hmm. mouth should do what? Hear the word of the gospel. Hear the word of the gospel and believe. And believe. See, you got to hear the gospel, believe what you have heard. Repent of your sins, confess that for me, and be baptized in all of sins. And the Lord did add you 
to the one body, the one church. What's so hard about that? What is so hard about that? You know what's so hard? When people have been bombarded with false doctrine. When they, when they tell you one church is as good as another. There's nowhere in the Bible. Go to church of your choice. Nowhere in the Bible. As a matter of fact, when there's only one other thing, you don't have a choice. Amen. Amen. Husbands, do you have a choice of wives? Once you marry them? Sisters! Sisters? No. Do your <laughs> Do your husband have a choice? No. Sisters, when you cook dinner for your husband, if you do, <laughs> do you have a choice of eating? After you sleep on the hot stove all day long. I don't care if he eat it at work. He better pour something down. Hey, hey, man, just us. <laughs> better pour something down. Hey, man, you cook over the hot stove all day long. And he, he come home and say, oh, baby, I'm not hungry. I ate McDonald's early. <laughs> <laughs> He'll probably eat, eat McDonald's next night, too. <laughs> hey, hey, man, hey, man. When there's only one of a certain thing, you don't have a choice. You got to have that one. Amen. Amen. It ain't hard for me to sit and hear false doctrine and talk and not be stirred up. I was stirred up. I had to say something, and I did. I wish I had more time, though. That, that guy that I knew he had all the time in the world, and he was laughing at his feet, so he had the advantage. And said some things no one I couldn't respond to because it was a funeral. But I wish he was here now. I'm going to try to get him here. And, and, and we'll see how bold he is. We'll see. I'm going to try. Anyway, this is the plan for all mankind. I'm not trying to sound bagocious. I'm telling you the truth. Me personally, I fear no man. The Bible is right. Just stay with the book. Just stay with the book. I don't care if they're Billy Graham or Billy Graham's son. Or Ed Young or Ed Young's son. I don't care who it is. The Bible is right. I fear no man. Just stay with the book. That's the only plan from all mankind to be saved. There is no other plan. If you accept anything else, you're going to be lost. And that's just how it is. If you think one is as good as another, then go out there and join. We're going to join in. Well, let's see who will stand in the last day. The Bible will be there, and the Bible is right. Amen. If you're here and you're not really sure, ask some questions. The Bible is right. We, we got time. We got time all day. And I know the ball didn't come on this evening, but I ain't worried about that. What's, what's happening here is a lot more important what's going on out there. Amen. 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 When it's all said and done, the game will be over but their souls still being lost. Anyway, that's the plan for all mankind. You come to Christ, you want Jesus? Here how you get it. You gotta hear the death, the burial, of Christ. You gotta hear that from the scripture. You gotta believe what you've heard. Repent of your sin, confess that for me, and be baptized in order, and the Lord then add you to his church, which is his body. Live right, and die right. You're going to be home. And if you do all that, matter of fact, over here, we'll give you a sword. I, I have one here. <laughs> we'll give you a sword. <laughs> we'll give you one. It's free. Obey God, we get a free sword. And you can study whenever you, whenever you want. Amen. Amen. The word of God is quick and powerful and is sharp than any two-edged sword. It could go in and it could, it could go both ways. When simple God on the last day, the word of God won't be there. Don't be found 
lacking anything. Amen. Amen. You got time to get it right right now. If there's something lacking in your life, get it straight right now. Because tomorrow is not promised to any of us. The doctor said that my niece had from two weeks to two months to live. She was gone in about four or five days. She was gone. Sister Hughes' granddaughter passed away last Sunday. My niece passed away on Tuesday. Don Marie is dead. Soul train! Dundee is dead. My Marie's train. Guess what? All around us. We, we, we all going to live all flesh. Don't take a chance on it. If there's something lacking in your life, get it straight right now. Get your, get your heart right. Get your life in order. Amen. Because tomorrow is not a promise to any of us. If you're married, not, not up, up, up tight, up to Paul. Get it straight right now. Amen. If you're stumbling in anything, get it right right now. If you got a problem with drugs or alcohol or if you want to be gay, get your life straight right now. Amen. Tomorrow is not a promise to any of us. If you can't get along with folks, get it straight right now. Because one of these days, God will say, enough. Jesus will told them, you got two swords, that's enough. One of these days, God will say, on our lifespan, he's going to say, okay, you've had enough time. We, we, we don't know where it is. So the best thing to do is get your heart right now. By the blood run warm your veins, get your heart right now. Get your life going right now. Don't think you, think you have time. Don't think that because man, man time ain't like God's time. Whatever might be your life, get it straight right now. God called me to come. What can I show?